Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Gravity Ace devlog. This week I want to talk about AI programming. I've seen a few posts from people asking questions about basic AI recently. Uh, it seems overwhelming, but I'm here to tell you it can be simple. Complicated behavior is often just a side effect of a few simple rules. Uh, first, let's look at drones. These little guys are ships. Uh, they fly around. They have one job. Shoot the player. To do that, they need to be able to avoid obstacles, uh, move towards the player, and aim their guns. Uh, as you can see, their movement pattern is uh, interesting, somewhat unpredictable. It looks fairly complex, their behavior. Uh, they can navigate. As I move towards them, they move back. As I pull away, they give chase. Uh, they can aim their cannons. They can shoot. They avoid the cavern walls. Uh, and they take bounces and getting hit with debris in stride. Uh, they can even seem to navigate arbitrary pathways within the cave system. Another thing you'll notice is that they can't hit each other with their own bullets. Uh, that simplifies things a lot. And in this clip, I've given my shield 5,000 health. Otherwise, the video would have been a lot harder to make. So let's first look at the node setup. Drones and other moving objects in the game are all rigid body 2Ds. Uh, rigid bodies are great because you get a lot of great um, physics interactions basically for free. The engine just makes it work. Uh, while it's simulating the world. You give a rigid body 2D a push and it'll bounce and fall and collide without writing any code at all. It's pretty cool. There's a collision shape of course and there are two sprites. One for the base of the drone and one for the turret. And this allows the turret to rotate independently of the body. Some of these nodes are cosmetic so I'll skip over them but let me show you some of the animations. Uh, we've got animations for drones appearing from a warp for when they've been destroyed. We've got a shooting animation and a flying animation. Next there are some timers for handling cooldowns and I'll talk about those more when we get into the code. Uh, there are some sound effect nodes, there's some UI for showing health bars, and then we get to these. Uh, these Raycast 2D nodes are important. These are how the drones navigate and move without colliding with things. Think of them like uh, whiskers on a cat. I have four of them. Each one is configured to collide with uh, important objects in the world like structures and walls and the player. And I'll show you how they work in a minute. So let's dig into some code. Uh, there's a lot going on here, but I'll give you the highlights that are relevant to the AI system. Uh, first of all, every enemy has health and a flag to say whether the enemy is alive or dead. This one also has a flag to tell if it's asleep. I've made the drones go dormant when they're off screen or when they first appear, and then take a second or two to wake up. Integrate forces is where most of the magic happens. This is a built-in function called by the engine that allows you to override the physics of the rigid body 2D. I'm using it to program AI behavior into the drones for movement. So first, I check if the game is in editor mode. When in the editor, the drone's AI is deactivated and they don't move. Uh, next, I do some checks to see if the drone is asleep or dead, if the player exists, and if the player is alive. And if none of those are active, you know, if the, if the player is dead, then it just doesn't do anything. Then I get the delta time for this physics step. In Godot, physics runs at a locked 60 frames per second, but it's configurable. So I grab that time delta here so that everything will run at a constant rate regardless of hardware or configuration settings. Okay, so that's the setup. Let's look at the actual algorithm. Uh, first, remember these uh, Raycast 2Ds? Uh, this block of code rotates them as a group at 11 pi rotations per second, which is pretty fast. Uh, one full 360 ro rotation is 2 pi. Uh, it checks each ray for a collision and finds the very closest collision point. Next, if that closest collision point was found, you know, there's something nearby that it's touched with one of its whiskers, then it tries to dodge it by moving perpendicular to the vector pointing to that collision. So it chooses a direction left to right to dodge randomly, and it adds the max thrust amount to the drone's linear velocity. So that's dodging. Uh, next, we calculate a distance and a normalized vector to the player. Those values are used to rotate the turret towards the player. A tween node 
is used to smoothly animate the turret rotation. Uh, next, we check the distance to the player. If it's greater than 150 pixels, then the drone will move towards the player. And if we're too close, then the drone will move away from the player. And then finally, as the last step, we'll just clamp the max velocity of the drone so that it doesn't keep speeding up without limit. So that's it for movement. Conceptually, it's pretty simple. It's like a, like a blind animal that can smell the player, and it uses its whiskers to detect walls and other obstacles nearby to avoid collisions. It rotates its whiskers looking for collisions, tries to dodge perpendicular to anything it's about to, to hit, aims the turret at the player position, and tries to maintain a distance from the player of about 150 pixels. Shooting is the only other major thing it does. The shoot cooldown node is a timer. It calls shoot whenever it times out, and the shoot function then randomizes the timer and restarts it. Uh, that makes the drone keep firing regularly with a little random variation until it's either off screen or the drone or the player are dead. If everyone is still alive and awake and on screen, then the drone actually fires a bullet via the animation player. So that's the major components of the drone AI. Uh, feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments. I'll also be posting this code over on gravityace.com and I'll include a link in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.